Hi Michael, this is Coach Smart from ABC Baseball Camps. I'm here to do your hitting evaluation. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is your setup. How you set up to the home plate and get ready to hit. Okay, um, Michael, one thing I would recommend is maybe you get a little bit wider. Okay, we want to make sure that we're when we're set up in the batter's box, we're athletic. You should be able to play linebacker or guard a guy in basketball with how your feet are set up in the batter's box. And your feet look a little bit narrow. Uh, the good thing is, though, is that you're parallel, which I like. I like parallel feet. Both feet point the same way. I think is a very important attribute for good hitters. Um, let's roll through this a little bit. Okay, kind of a lousy pitch. Let's look at another one. Okay, see it now. Because you're so uh, narrow to start off with, Michael, you end up being really, really wide when you actually take your swing. So I think I would start more in line with where the line is there and then just lift your foot up and put it back down or take a short stride okay part of being a good hitter is being athletic in the batter's box so when you finish your swing you can hold that finish and have what we call dynamic balance okay okay so from this position here uh, there's some good things in this part of this part of this swing that I do like. Okay, it looks like you really understand or have a good feel for how to use that back leg. Okay, really important you take that back leg and drive it down to the inside of that front foot. And you do a pretty good job with that. The key to that, the key to that is when you push that knee down like you are, Michael. You got to make sure that that front foot is not pointing open which appears that it is right now that front foot has got to be still got to be closed like it was when you first started before you took your stride okay that's a huge component and the angle of your barrel right here is not perfect for sure it should be more like this right now okay one that we don't want to do but as a hitting standpoint is swing uphill okay swinging uphill is going to be is tough you got to be a big time power guy you know it's going to end up being six three six four it's going to hit with a lot of power in order to have an uphill swing the reason that is is because when you have an uphill swing the swing's going to be longer. Okay, and we want to have a short swing. We want to hit line drives, hit missiles all around the field, and then, you know, let the power things kind of take care of themselves. But we got to make sure that, that you're not swinging uphill, okay? So at the point of contact, uh, I like what you do with your backside, your knee. If we can keep that front foot closed, that'd be a little better. Okay, and Michael, when you're making contact with a baseball buddy, you want your belly button and your chest to be facing towards the second baseman, where the second baseman would play, kind of in between first and second. And when you make contact here, your belly button and chest is facing back of the pitcher, and that's only going to enable you to hit pitches on the inside half and down the middle, and to be a considered a complete hitter you have to be able to hit the balls on the outside half too on the outside half outside corner okay so we got to make sure where I'd like you to make contact would be right about with your body in this position right there your chest now is facing towards second base second baseman excuse me that's where you should be making contact but you keep rotating towards the ball 
and that's going to take that. See, your front hip is completely open, and so is your front shoulder. And we got to try to stay a little more square to home plate throughout the length of your swing. Okay? Once you make contact, then you can rotate all you want. But until contact, we got to try to stay square to home plate. Okay, let's see what happens after you hit it. Okay, so what I see, uh, Michael, is that you're pushing backwards. See the angle of your body there? What you should be doing is transferring your weight to your front side and pushing forward. That way we can get some more extension on your hands through contact. There's your hands. You hit it. You've already kind of released your barrel and there's not a lot of space between your knob of your bat and your belly button. We'd like to see that bat, you know, extension all the way out to here someplace. All the way out to there. Big time extension. For every inch of extension you get, you can add about 10 to 15 feet of ball flight. So if you were to add 3 or 4 or 5 inches of extension, you're talking about 35 to 50 more feet of ball flight. So instead of hitting the ball right to an outfielder, it might go over his head or it might go over a fence someplace. So we got to work on getting your getting more extension. The way you get more extension is by transferring that weight to your backside. Okay, so you start off your swing. Okay, you're in a setup right here. And, oops, is that a ball? That's a ball. Okay, you're in your setup, and your weight is evenly distributed between your front side and your back side right now. Your front foot and your back foot. Okay? That's great. And then you kind of load up on your back side a little bit. You transfer some weight back. Okay? And then you take your stride, which is your timing mechanism. And then when you swing, you should be transferring that weight forward. So it's almost like your back foot won't stay in the ground because you're pushing so hard forward. And you kind of get stuck and see how you push back there? We don't want to push back. We want to push forward. Forward. You'll see some guys will, in the big leagues that will swing and their back foot will come off the ground because they're trying to exert so much pressure going forward into the baseball. And you're losing some of your power, Michael, by pushing backwards. So the way I, when I work with hitters that have that same problem, is after each swing when they get done I say okay now now fix it and I make them get their chest over their front leg a little bit lean forward so they can feel the difference between being stuck on your backside and then actually transferring weight forward and being in the proper position from a swing mechanic standpoint buddy I wouldn't change too much Okay, I wouldn't change too much. You get your hands in a good position here. You might drop that barrel a little bit quick. Okay, we want to keep that barrel up a little bit longer. See where the barrel is right now? That's in a pretty good position right now, right here. Okay, as you start to take your hands towards the baseball, your barrel should go like this. that way instead of just keep going down farther behind your head okay I'm sure you'll get away with it at the level you're at now but we want to think big picture here we want to think you know three or four years from now when you're in high school and you're facing 85 90 miles an hour we have to be able to shorten that swing to get to, on time with those that type of velocity. The way to do that is to keep your barrel up longer and when you have your hands go forward and down at the same time instead of having your bat just go down and your hands kind of follow behind it. You kind of drag your barrel a little bit. But you got a lot of things you do real well. I love what you do with your backside. So keep doing that and work on keeping that barrel up. Michael, I hope this helps you a little bit. 
Uh, I look forward to seeing you at the next ABC Baseball Camp. Thank you.